I'm reviewing here! Hello, everybody! <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of... Oh, jeez, I got a cough. <clears throat> Welcome to another episode of I'm Reviewing Here, a podcast where I, Matthew Bussey, watches and reviews Sight and Sound's top greatest movies of all time. Oh my goodness me. Um, guys, I just went to wash my hands and I squirted on the sh- the soap and it squirted out and it got on my towel. So annoying. Damn it. The river was deep, but I swam it. Damn it. Yeah. Oh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Great movie. That's not on Sight and Sound's list. You know what, though? I got I got to say something. I love the music in Rocky Horror Picture Show. I don't actually love the movie that much. I know, don't kill me. Please don't kill me. I actually first heard about Rocky Horror Picture Show from Glee. <laughs> yeah, that was the first I ever heard of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I mean, the, sort of. I, uh, Yeah, sort of. I had like kind of heard of it before, but when they did that freaking Rocky Horror Glee episode, it's like sticking hot forks in my ears. I mean, I can't like... I, I can't unhear it, but, um, Glee, Jesus Christ, Glee, 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 I can't, like, I can't, I get so embarrassed. I don't know what song was worse, was worse, uh, uh, Red Solo Cup, It's Not Easy Being Green, or, um, Gangnam Style. <sighs> My face is so red right now. Okay, all right, all right. This is not a Glee rewatch podcast. I think they already are doing that, aren't they? I don't know. Everyone is doing a rewatch podcast. Everyone is. I'm not really into them. I I know Boy Meets World. They have a rewatch podcast, but I'm gonna wait until they get to season four because I didn't really care about the seasons when they were that young. I really didn't care. I want to get to when they were in high school, like seniors and above, and then I'll watch it. Even Stevens has a rewatch podcast, which I like. Gotta watch, listen to. I mean, because it's Even Stevens. Hello. That show is like the Bible to me. It's like the visual Bible. Yeah. God, I wish I was on that show. Oh, I miss that show so much. Yeah, literally, um, last night I had to work late at home. It, it was a long, I know, I, and you should not work late at home. It's very bad. But with my job, I have to work late at home, especially during certain times of the year. But anyway, you know what I put on? The Even Stevens movie. Yeah. 2003. Whoa! That's turning 20 this year? Oh, shit. I should not have said that. Now I want to go put a bag over my head and cry. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, things are good. Things are very good. This uh, episode, I believe, is coming out on a Friday, and today's movie is going to put you in a chipper mood, my friends. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, no. That's just how my mom laughs. I always like to interpret her. Uh no, this is a very uh bleak movie. Bleak, I use that word all the time and I also in uh the last episode talked about how movie critics and movie buffs like myself, we are obsessed with dark movies. Yeah, it's true. I don't really know what's wrong with us. I don't know what it says about us, but I really liked this movie I'm going to talk about today. Today, my friends, we are going, I, as in we, I mean, oh, Jesus, I always screw this up. God damn it. Let me start over. Today, my friends, I'm going to talk about a very, very interesting, brutal, stylish, bizarre, dark psychological drama called Morvern Collar. 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 Yeah, that's how you say her last name. It's a name in the movie. Morvern Collar. Yeah, that's the name. I screwed it up again. Alrighty, Morvern. We'll just call it Morvern. Here we go. Hello? Who? No. No, this is Morvern Kalla. Morvern Kalla? M O R V? Well, I do books myself because it's got a lot to offer me. It's gone there. It's left me. I 
when you're writing, you can just knock off when you want, you know. out the window. Smoke a cigarette, make a cup of coffee, take a shower. It's much better than waking up on cold mornings and it's 39 years to go to a pension. Yeah? When do I get the money? <laughs> oh, God, it's creepy. It's creepy man this is a creepy movie uh it's not a horror movie it has like kind of has horror elements but um oh man I re i'm really excited to talk about this one so this was directed by an incredible filmmaker named lynn ramsey uh she co-wrote the screenplay it's based on a book by uh alan warner Lynn Ramsey, she hasn't directed like a ton of movies, but she go she's a Scottish director. Her movies are fantastic. Uh she did a movie a few years ago with Joaquin Phoenix called You Were Never Really There. I believe it's on Amazon Prime. I think it's an Amazon movie. Unbelievable. Brutal and violent, but gripping and unbelievable. Better than that, though, in 2011, she came out with a movie called We Need to Talk About Kevin. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm acting like you guys like are nodding with me, uh, I, which is really stupid. I don't know why I'm, I'm thinking that, but wow, I'm very... Okay, I need help. Uh, we Need to Talk About Kevin is one of, like, hands down, one of my favorite movies of all time. Like, not top 10, but top... Um, Maybe like top 60, to be perfectly honest. Sorry, I got a lot of favorite movies. But we need to talk about Kevin. It stars uh, Tilda Swinton, John C. Riley, Ezra Miller. It is a movie so bone-chilling. I, I, I can't even put it into words. I, 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 can, I mean, I can, but it's hard to, and I'm going to screw it up. We need to talk about Kevin as a, as a movie where, you know, Tilda Swinton plays this mother and she's by herself and everyone in town hates her. And you're like, why is that? And then all these flashbacks happen. You find out she was married to John C. Riley's character. They had a son named Kevin played by Ezra Miller. And she felt nothing for her son just from birth, his birth on. She just felt nothing for him. And then kind of a spoiler alert, but I mean, it's kind of like in the synopsis for the movie. When Kevin gets to high school, he takes a bow and arrow. He takes a, a bow and a whole bunch of arrows to school and kills every a bunch of kills people in his school. Sorry, I was trying to make that sound eloquent, but it, I messed it up. Yeah, he does that. And the way that she films the movie, the cinematography and the music and just the performances. I mean, Tilda Swinton can absolutely never, ever, ever be bad. But amazing uh morvern keller came out uh in 2002 uh nine year eight not yet yeah, nine years before we need to talk about kevin sorry i'm terrible at math um, except for algebra i do love algebra and it, it morvern keller shares a lot of the same qualities of of lynn ramsey's uh little you know the way that she films movies lynn ramsey i see this with all due respect she's obsessed with like morbid curiosity you know her characters in her movies are flawed in the sense that they do things that aren't ethical you know their moral compass is very skewed and they do things that are unspeakable at times they do things that are maybe inappropriate but you know they can get away with it in Morvern Keller though I mean what the lead in it more what the lead character does is so despicable 
And you see this early on in the movie, and then you keep following her. And you know what, though? You're fascinated by it. That's the the power of this movie is that, you know, Lynn Ramsey, she makes you feel like more of her. This mo- <laughs> no, this movie does not make you feel like a killer. No, of course not. But it almost makes, it, it seduces you. You know, when a movie can do that, when a low-budget movie, that is, a low-budget movie from way back in the day can do that all these years later in this crazy 2023 year where everything is like digitized and, and you know, people aren't going to the friggin' movies anymore. It's amazing. And Morvern Keller from start to finish, it drew me in and I could not look away from it. Yeah, this, this was, this was a hauntingly made, but very, uh, disturbing movie. <laughs> so this movie is set in Scotland and, um, I'm always, I've I'm dying to go there. Everyone in my family has been to Scotland except for me. Damn it. I just want to go to Loch Ness, though. I really, really want to go find that monster. I'm, I'm, I almost said I'm kidding. No, I'm not kidding. I'm deadly serious. I just want to go see the monster and get a picture, get a selfie. I mean, wouldn't that be so cool? People got to leave that monster alone, too. I mean, I'm not leaving it alone. I get it, but I get that. But I, okay. Anyway, um, yeah, I do. I really want to go to Loch Ness. Morvern Keller. So the character of Morvern Keller, she is played by the incredible Samantha Morton. Samantha Morton is an English actress. Uh, she, I think, is very underrated. I feel like the usual, mo- uh, uh, well, how do I say, the, the, someone who goes to the movies but like only goes and sees the action movies and not really like the indies and everything they won't recognize I don't think that they'll recognize Samantha Morton but she is phenomenal she's been nominated for two Oscars she's won a BAFTA award uh she's won a Golden Globe award she 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 does a lot of independent movies and she's fantastic she is just um, I'm looking at her filmography right now. She was in Fantastic Beasts. Oh, yeah, she was in Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Oh, oh, I forgot about that. No, but she's good, though. Um, and her performance in this movie is just phenomenal. I remember her in other movies. She was in one of my favorite movies called In America 2003. Check it out. Oh, my God, you will bawl your eyes out. The least sensitive human being on this planet will like shed a tear watching in America. It's so freaking good. I think, yeah, she got an Oscar nomination for that for best actress. Very well deserved, but you know, she does a lot of other indies. She did an indie called the messenger with, uh, Woody Harrelson and, uh, Ben Foster, which she also got an Oscar nomination for. I love uh, Samantha Morton because, you know, she doesn't do movies and plays and whatnot. She doesn't do that for the fame she does it because she loves to act. You know, she's a true actress. You see a lot of actors. I don't know actors in Hollywood. I don't. But I feel like a lot of them, you can tell that they like the publicity. You know, they like to be recognized. Not all of them. I, I'm, I'm not saying who. I'm not saying. Of course not. Actors, all actors. Actors may have huge followings on social media. But you can tell that, you know, they, they kind of like, they like to get noticed, you know. They kind of like that. But Samantha Morton, I love her because, you know, she's just an actress who acts because she loves to act. That's it. Um, I think that's great. That's why I've always loved Samantha Morton. She's just, she's always, you know, I've anytime I see her in a little indie, I'm like, oh, yes. Like, she just always does a great job. Morvern is a very complicated character in this movie. Now, when this movie opens up, are you ready? Get ready. You might you might need a, a, a um, oh god, what's like a drink that calms you down? Milk. Yeah, get a glass of milk. No, don't do milk because it's not vegan. Uh, oat milk. Yeah, get a glass of oat No, not oat milk. That doesn't really go well. Shit, what goes well? Ice. Just eat some ice while you do this. No, that's bad for your teeth. Oh god, what's good? OJ, o- orange juice, okay? Orange juice. Yeah, just drink some orange juice when you're listening to this. Orange juice is good. It has a whole bunch of vitamins. Vitamin A through Z. Okay. When this movie, Morvern Keller, opens up, Morvern uh, is lying on the ground in her this little house. 
She's lying next to this body, and you see these Christmas tree lights sh- flashing on and off, on and off. And it's 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 the lights are out in the room, but the the lights are going on and off, on and off. It's a very haunting, hypnotizing, hypnotic. I mean, moment. Lynn Ramsey does that in her movies, like the cinematography in this movie. It's by uh, oh, I can't say their name. Alwyn H. Kukler. I think it's how you say their name. Uh, yeah, he's he's Sherman. That's how you say his name great in this movie but um you you watch this opening and you go well who's that you soon see that this this person on the ground that morvern is hugging his wrists are slit and he's dead he killed himself you also find out that it was her boyfriend and he didn't just kill himself he left a suicide note he left her um, like a suicide note on his computer and oh, wow, throwback. It's like this movie came out in 2002. The computer is like, you know, remember like the big fat ass computers, like literally the butt, the booty of the computer was like the size of like the size of a, 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 a pig. Yeah. I mean, that's what that is. But she goes there and she sees that he left, you know, a suicide note for her. And he just says, I'm sorry, I can't live anymore. But he also was very loving and he says, look, I left you, you know, all the money, you know, in my bank account. I made you a mixtape. And sorry about that. I just spat into the mic. Um, And he also wrote a book uh, that has not been published yet. And he says, I want you to publish it for me. And, you know, you can you'll get the money and everything. So. Now, in an ordinary situation, um, if your boyfriend has committed suicide on Christmas morning, you should probably go and call the police, right? Morvern doesn't do that. Hmm. Morvern, and this is just credit to Samantha Morton as an actress, you know, Morvern is just stoic this entire time. It's just like, you know... Did she know her boyfriend was going to commit suicide? Even if she did know, why isn't she reacting? She has no emotion at all. No emotion. She's not sad. She's not hysterically crying. She's not, like, angry or anything. She is just, like, walking around her room with her boyfriend's corpse in the the corner of the room, going about her day. Uh, It's weird. It's weird. Who is this woman? You know, you learn a little bit about her. You know, she is kind of a party girl. She is best friends with uh, Lana, who's played by uh, this actress named Kathleen Mc- Kathleen McDermott. Never heard of her before, but she's very good in this movie. Um, they, you know, they kind of have a hedonistic lifestyle. They love to go out and party and, you know, make out with guys and have sex. And they're very close friends. I mean, there's a scene where they're taking a bath together and they're just like... <laughs> They're like sisters almost, you know, um, it's, it's, they're very, very close. We don't know really a lot about Morvern's family. Uh, I don't even think that they're mentioned in this movie. Morvern, you know, she hangs out with Lana and Lana, I believe it's Lana's mother or Lana's grandmother. And also it, like I said, it's set in Scotland and it's the small port town, uh, and it's, you know, you can just like feel the cold as you're watching this movie, like, like not just cause it's Christmas time in Scotland, but you know, you just feel it. it it's already, you know, Ramsey has made a very, uh, unsettling movie. So the scenes, you know, scenes go on and Morvern goes to her boyfriend's, her dead boyfriend's computer and brings up his manuscript online. And what does she do? She deletes his name and puts her name there to make it seem like she wrote the book. Um, okay, that's unethical. Also, you haven't called the cops yet. Call the cops and get your boyfriend's body out of there. Like, what the hell, Morvern? (sighs) Morvern, I wonder if that is like a code name or like historically that means like morbid or something. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't look that up. Guys, it gets even crazier. Um, well... One thing, you know, Lana asks about her, uh, Morvern's boyfriend and Morvern kind of just puts her head down and goes, he left me like he moved out and Lana's like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, that sucks. And she's like, it's okay. Um, so she lies to her best friend, uh, red flag, number one, (laughs) red flag, number two. Oh my God. I can't believe I'm even saying this. It's just a movie. It's just a movie. Morvern. 
wraps her boyfriend up in a shower curtain, puts him in the bathtub, cuts him up into little pieces, takes his body parts to the mountains, and buries him. Buries him. Bury? Bury? I, I don't like to say bury. It's, ugh, it sounds so American. Buries him. Yeah. She's deranged. I, I, yeah. Yeah. She actually does that. I'm not, I'm not making that up. She does that in this movie. And the way Ramsey films it, it just, it's credits again to her and her very creepy filmmaking style. It's such like, again, I had to rewind and go, she, she didn't, she's not, she's, she's not burying her boyfriend's body parts. Is she, oh my God, what, huh? What? Yeah. You know, it's like I said at the beginning, you know, more of her, uh, she doesn't really know right from wrong. She really doesn't. So yeah, she's cut up her boyfriend. Everyone thinks her boyfriend left her when really he's killed himself and she's hid his body into little, you know, pieces. Uh, she takes all the money, you know, or, or not all of it, but she takes a lot of it out of his account. And she goes, Lana, you know, I got all this money. Let's go on a holiday, which uh, in the UK, holiday means vacation for those who don't know. Sorry, I'm being really condescending and annoying. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, she says, yeah, I got this money. Let's go on a holiday. Let's go to Spain. They go to this this nice resort in Spain. Right before they go, though, you know, this, this is also a big part. Lana tearfully confesses to... Uh, uh, Morvern. I'm so sorry, but I slept with your boyfriend. Um, I did it. How does Morvern react? The same way when her boyfriend committed suicide. She just doesn't really react at all. She kind of is just like, oh, it's, it's okay. Like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, cut to the next scene. They're in beautiful Almeria, Spain. Never even heard of that place. Um, Spain's amazing, though. Definitely go there. Barcelona. Oh, my God. So good. They go there, they have some fun, they drink a lot, you know, they, they go to this hotel, they meet some men. Morvern is very, you know, she's a free spirit, she meets this guy, they have sex. There's a very interesting moment, though, where, you know, I think it's right after they've had sex, where it's a weird moment. It kind of close, it, it, Ramsey does a close-up on Morvern's face. And it, it sounds, I couldn't really understand, it might have just been the accents, but I think this guy that she just had sex with, he basically says, you know, my mom just passed away. And Morvern, for just a, a quick moment, you see this change go across her face. And it's just a very, very subtle look of shame, almost. Or, I don't know, it's hard to explain. But it triggers her because in the next scene, she would, you know, it's the next morning and she goes right to Lana and she just goes, we got to go. We're getting out of here. And Lana's like, you know, what? Why? And she just goes, we're just leaving. I don't want to be here anymore. We're going. Yeah. What's up with that? Did Morvern's mother die? Is that, did that trigger something? Whatever it was, something triggered her and that's why she wants to get out. So, you know. It's up to you to interpret. I wonder if in the book, in Alan Warner's book, if maybe they, they tap into that more. But I don't know. They leave, though. They are, you know, driving through Spain and, and like, the, the desert part. I didn't even know there was, like, a desert part, tundra, whatever, in Spain. But they do that. They get lost. Uh, and Lon is freaking out. She's like, you got us lost. And Morvern, again, is just very, very... Um, unperturbed by any of this. She's just smoking a ciggy, you know, ciggy cigarette. I never say that. She's smoking a cigarette, just like, whatever, you know, I don't care. And she leaves Lana the next morning. Mor Lana's sleeping and Morvern, I think she leaves her some cash, but she just basically goes and leaves. So she's still in Spain, Morvern, and she meets up with these publishers who think that she's written. They who think that that she's written this book that she has not written. She is just plagiarizing it because she put her name on it after her boyfriend committed suicide. And these publishers are amazed by her writing, and they, you know, say we want to publish it, and they offer her all this money, and Morvern is like thrilled. And cut, it cuts back to Scotland. So Morvern does return to Scotland. Lana's back there. And Morvern basically, you know, she goes up to Lana and 
Lana too, you know, you can tell that she feels like, oh my God, is Morvern mad that I slept with her boyfriend? <laughs> I mean, girl, you should not do that, period, especially your best friend's boyfriend. Come on, Lana. But she, Morvern is still kind of like that. I'm not mad about that. It's okay. And then Morvern goes, look, I'm going to leave and I'm not coming back. Okay. And Lana just goes, I, and Morvern invites her too. She says, come with me. And Lana just goes, I, I, I can't go with you. And, and she says something very interesting. She tells her, you know, wherever you go, it's, it's going to be just as bad. You know, it's going to be just as bad as the town we're in right now and the situation we're in right now. I forgot to mention too, you know, Morvern's life, her job is not that good. She works in a supermarket. Ramsey makes it very clear that it's just not a good time. You know, she has these moments, like there's one scene where Morvern's in the supermarket and she's like holding up a carrot and there's like a, a grub or like a, wor a worm wiggling on it. You know, it's like... Ay, 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 ay. So that happens, and uh, and and Lana, you know, politely declines, and Morvern just again being Morvern is just like, okay, well, I don't really care. I'm gonna go, and she leaves, and then it ends on, um, you know, she gets her suitcase and and leaves. The movie ends on a very stylish note. Morvern is basically in a nightclub, and she has her headphones on, and she's listening to the mixtape that her boyfriend made for her before he killed himself. And it's a very unique shot because, you know, there's there's chaos and pandemonium everywhere around her. But Morvern is, again, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the right word and I can't think of it right now because this always happens whenever I get into a movie. She, she, she's, she's um, I already used the word stoic. She doesn't, she's nothing, she's completely not distracted by everything going around her. And there are these quick shots where it almost looks like it's her boyfriend in the club, like watching her, you know? It, it's, it's, it's weird. It's weird. It's, um, it's a very chilling moment. And it's almost like the more you watch it, you, the more that you watch Morvern walk through, it's almost like, that guilt is is crawling up her body. You know, you can see it in Morton's eyes. You know, it's like her eyes are slowly raising. You know, her brow is furrow furrowing. Is that a word? Yeah, it's it's like it's like you know you just see that in her face. And then the movie ends, and you're just like chilled to the bone. Yeah. It's a very dark movie. Um, and Lynn Ramsey, yeah, I, I love her to death. But yeah, she makes very, very dark, bl I'm using the word again, bleak, I'm sorry, bleak, uh, not happy movies. So what does this all mean in Morvern Keller? What did I take away from it? Well, I took away that um, people are very screwed up. <laughs> um, I took away that Samantha Morton is an incredible actress. I mean, what a performance in this movie. Because again, she makes Morvern, I mean, she doesn't, she could have easily made Morvern like a monster in this film, but she doesn't. I mean, Morvern is is mentally uh, incredibly disturbed. But again, it's like I said, I just don't think she understands ethics. She doesn't understand morals. It's up to you to really decide why she ended up the way she did. You know, I mean, she doesn't have a good job. She lives in a really crappy part of, of town. But her life is basically just crappy. I mean, she exists in her town for one thing only, and that's really to just go out and drink and have sex and offer her body to people. And that's very, you know, that's a very particular thing in this movie. There's a really b uh, bizarre shot where early on in the movie, you know, Morvern is out with Lana and she go Morvern goes out... Uh, to the, like the the ocean or the lake or whatever yeah the ocean yeah scotland has oceans duh no wait was it the lake or the it was the ocean yeah she goes to this ocean and um there's like a boat going by and there's a guy on the boat and morvern just like lifts up her whole dress and it's just flashing her you know underwear uh, underwear to this guy her crotch to this guy and the guy is just like uh, what? And he just keeps sailing. And then Morvern just, you know, dropped her dress again. So this movie, you know, it really, it, <clears throat> it oh, Jesus, sorry, hold on. <clears throat> tickles are the worst thing on this goddamn planet. I hate tickles in the throat, especially during a podcast. 
it's up to you, you know, Ramsey, again, she doesn't explain a lot of things. It's up to you to really decide why um, Morvern is the way she is, why she is, um, you know, I mean, I don't know if psychopathic or sociopathic is the right word. I don't know the difference between those two, and I keep meaning to Google what the difference is. I'm afraid of what might pop up because Google image, oh, yeah, sometimes they pop up images that you do not want to see, but um, incredible movie. I, I I loved it. Um, it's not going to be for everyone. This movie, if you, if you, if you like uh, Disney movies and and happy movies, uh, this is not for you at all. No, I'm I'm I definitely mean that. If you love movies with really strong, unique characters, especially female characters, especially, um, this is right for you. Uh, I I was just completely blown away by it. Lynn Ramsey, you know, like I wish she made more movies. But she's that director who really takes her time with with uh, her art. You know, she may and when she does, every time it is flawless, like flawless. I mean it. And that's the best thing. You know that that really is the best thing for filmmakers. Like, if there are any filmmakers listening to this, I have one suggestion, and it's this: take your time, take your time. If you have a lot of ideas in your head, it's good. Write them down. But don't film everything at once. Take your time. Because if you do what, if you act like directors like Lynn Ramsey, you know, even if you have a, a new movie every five years or whatever, or, or whatever, you know, that movie, though, you're going to have all the time in the world to really make it amazing and perfect and thought provoking and nuanced and weird and, 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 uh, dark and and morbidly like funny and and just out there and that's exactly you know like lynn ramsey she has that reputation and it's amazing it's absolutely amazing um <laughs> i hope she does not act like that in real life no she doesn't i've seen interviews of her and no she's she's not she's um she's just a great director and samantha morton everyone someone please just give samantha morton like an oscar already i mean for real she was in now that i think about it I, she was in the whale recently with brendan fraser she had a small role in that she played brendan fraser's character's uh ex-wife in it but yeah morvern keller i highly recommend it it's dark it is gonna make you gasp it's gonna make you go what in the living christ is wrong with this woman but you know what it keeps you hooked from start to finish. It is very disturbing. It is very dark, though. I just, I do want to give that warning. But where can you watch this movie? For free! Yes, that's right. It is available on Tubi. Tubi. T-U-B-I. It is available on Tubi. Very bizarre choice to put on Tubi. But I guess not really, because, you know, this is a movie that, like, no one's heard of. So, and Tubi does put a lot of movies on there. But I hope you've heard of it now, and you're good, and you will listen to, you will watch it. No, watch it. Don't just listen to it, because that's going to be very confusing. I also forgot to mention, too, like, the soundtrack in this movie is so good. Uh, really, really good. Uh, Ramsey is always, uh, oh, my voice just cracked. Ramsey always has really good taste in music. My voice cracks whenever I think about music because I love music. It's like that Madonna song. Music makes the bourgeoisie come together. Yeah. Music. Oh, I gotta stop playing with that echo. I'm sorry, you guys. Well, is the echo like really bothering you? I mean, if it's bothering you, then shut up. I don't care. No, I do care. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm screwing with you. All right. I'm this is what happens when I get really into a movie. This is probably why I'm single, because every time I go on a date and we talk about movies, this happens, and then the girl is usually like, okay, I gotta go, bye, and then she scrams out of there like Roadrunner. Yeah, that's my life. But you know what? I love myself. I love who I am, and you should too. Love yourself. Why am I getting all like lovey-dovey, touchy-feely here on this episode? I don't know why. It's Morvern. Morvern herself, because she's so flawed. She's made me want to understand why so many people out there got so many problems. Uh, yes. Um, Morvern Keller. It's available on Tubi. Guys, this was really fun. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe. To I'm reviewing here. New episodes every Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I swear I'm not this annoying. I mean, that's not true, but um, I really hope that you enjoy this podcast as much as I enjoy doing it. It's a lot of fun. What's the moral of this episode? Um, get help if you feel like your loved one, your your spouse, your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, your partner, if, the, if you feel like they're uh, not healthy, Get them help, and God forbid if they die, um, 
don't do anything that Morvern does in this movie at all because uh, it's not going to help you at all. And um, yeah, just get help. Get help, people. Get help. We, we've all been in dark places before, but Morvern, oh my God, just basically don't ever be like Morvern. But definitely watch what she does because then you'll understand to not be like her. I can't think of anything funny to end on this note, so I'm just going to say goodbye. Okay, bye. Bye, everybody. Have a good day.